Hey guys, Hu Shang here. Welcome to another StarCraft 2 lesson. We're gonna be playing Protoss today, but this is actually a Zerg lesson. And basically the plan is to play through a bunch of Protoss build orders. And I think this is gonna help quite a bit with uh, your scouting, because if you really want to get good at scouting, you kind of need to know what to look for without seeing uh, the full picture. So I'm going to play through a bunch of Protoss Builders. We're going to start with some cheeses, so you can see some key factors identifying those. And then we'll work our way to some of the uh, other more common builds. Okay, let's start with uh, normal opening. Let me just make sure I have Protoss hotkeys. We can resume from replay too, so I'll only have to play the opening uh, the first time here. So generally, Protoss just goes for uh, 14 pylon, 16 gate, 17 gas. I'm going to get a 16 gas. And they usually gateway scout. If they do a gateway scout, then you don't need to worry about hatch block. If they do a pylon scout, then... Um, actually, let's do that. That'll be more interesting. Let's do a pylon scout, because then you can see when the probe uh, gets there with the pylon scout. It doesn't really matter for the build order if I do pylon or gate scout. So let's get this guy over here for a hundred. And this guy should arrive a little later than a 16 hatch. So this is the main reason you want to go 16 hatch. So our probe's arriving at about 49, 50 seconds. So as long as you get your hatch down before then, you won't get hatch blocked. Unless they do um, a scout before the pylon, like right at the beginning of the game. But in that case, there's no way you can stop that, so you'll just have to take your third base. Okay, so let's start off with maybe some of the um, cheeses. So there's a couple pretty common uh, hyper all-ins, like the, the Mass Charge Lot and Mass Adept. So let's try those builds. So we'll go Nexus, grab our Cyber. Your Overlord should be arriving uh, when the Cyber is almost done. Maybe halfway. Now Protoss likes to leave their probe about here because if you do any sort of uh, ling all ins, they need to see those lings coming. So if you're doing a, um, a ling all in, you might want to keep your overlord like here <clears throat> so you can see whether Protoss moves the probe to the side or not. So if the Protoss, if you come up with like two to four ling and Protoss runs over here, then you can sneak your lings out on this side. So good Protoss will try to run away from the lings, but try to keep an eye on the front like this. At least for a little bit. Okay, let's go uh, Stalker first. I think Stalker first is pretty good with um, these uh, these Adept all-ins. Rubber Twilight. So if you see Stalker first, that's definitely a little suspicious. Um, now one of the main features you want to look for with this build is um, the, the gases. an adept after this. They need two units, otherwise they can't hold any ling floods. Um, now on this map, you have a tower. Let me go back. There's a tower here. So if you're going to identify this build, the uh, adept all in, then what you really need to keep an eye on is the, the gases. Because if you don't know when the gases are taken, you're not going to know if they're all inning. Um, there is kind of a nice little area you can run to here that you can see this uh, top gas. So that's nice. You can see if one of the gases is taken or not. But um, probably it's a little better actually if you put your overlord um, over here in the corner so that you can see the gases. All right, let's grab the the robo. So we'll get to six probes. Pull out a gas. Oh, this guy didn't go. 
grab charge. We'll do the charge one first. They'll finish their wall at a normal time. And they can do this type of thing. So it's not like you can really overlord scout this because they're going to block it. So the only real feature you have to, to scout for this type of all in is the, the gasless nature of the build. Actually, there's one more clue. It's kind of subtle, but you can check if the Nexus is building probes. You can see here, this is a Nexus building probes, and this is one not building probes. So there's a little, um, one sec. There's a little uh, spinning, I don't know what you want to call that, <laughs> some blue lines on top. So if you see that, then uh, you know they're building probes, and if you don't see that, then it's uh, more likely they're committing to an all-in. Yeah, so no gases. Your overlord could be here, poke in around, you know, four, see so you no know gases, and then you can start making, uh, taking all your gases and making roaches. Another clue is they might, uh, full wall. They don't have to do this, but it gives them a little more units, so probably if they're all in, they're going to, uh, full wall, bring all their units across and start warping in. This is actually a little slow for the build. You can probably get to your base at about 445 with charge. So pretty fast. So you have to make sure you scout this build, um, you know, at least by four and um, make sure that they have gases that they're natural. You have to do this every game. Just make sure they always have their gases. They're always making probes. And then if they're not, you need to prepare for, uh, for this build. I do have a guide. I think I still have it up on my channel. Basically what you want to do against this build is stop at 41 drones, 3 gas, and just mass roaches. And uh, you don't need your layer, but you can definitely make some spores if you want. I mean, they, they can't really afford DT, but uh, you know, they, they might try to do something weird like 2 gas DT. So you can definitely get some spores, but don't get your layer against that. Okay, let's go into the replay so I can just keep playing more builds. There's also an Adept all-in. Um, with the Adept all-in, they just get a few more probes, so they have some gas, but it's basically the same build. There's some faster versions off of six gates instead of eight, like I did in that game, which I think are better, but um, they're basically the same thing. Okay, let's fast forward, and what do we want to do next? Let's do, uh, let's do Stargate next. Let's switch it up. So this is going to be basically the complete opposite. They're going to be <clears throat> doing a... Uh, a pretty standard macro build. Okay, so the the first feature of this build is you want to put uh, two guys in gas. So you're gonna have a little bit extra gas with this build. You're not gonna see that as Zerg, but let's go to the cyber finishing. So here's their first clue as Zerg. So Protoss will start at their Adept. Your Overlord should be over this cliff already. You'll see them uh, probably Chrono Boost that. Oh, I guess my pylon's a bit late. So you'll probably see them Chrono Boost the, uh, the Adept. Then they'll get a Stargate. And they won't get a uh, Warp Gate usually. So if you're scouting here and you see that they're not researching Warp Gate, that can be a, a sign that they're going to Stargate. Not for sure, but a sign. You'll see it's not uh, spinning in the middle, and now it is. So that's how you know if the, the warp gate research is started. And if you're playing right now and you see the Adept pop out, you can send this Overlord straight into their base. You can actually even go before that if you're willing to sacrifice it. Another common thing with this build is they can chrono the second Adept instead of the probes here. Um, so if you see that, you're going to want to make more links. So that's another thing you should be looking for. I'm just going to chrono this. And show you when it arrives. So we're at 3.30, it's just about to pop.
you'll notice that I have um, three adepts. Let's make a void right next. I could uh, make a stalker here for sure, but it's a little more common, I think, to make three adepts. Get a little more gas as Protoss. Now let's look at this third timing and let's look at the oracle timing. So the oracle comes across, should be hitting you about um, <clears throat> four minutes. So this is like the fastest you can get here. So if it's four minutes, uh, you should see the oracle, which is why you need to start your support crawlers at about, um, well, if you want to be really precise, you could do 340, but uh, usually people say 330. That way there uh, you get a little extra time. And yeah, so the oracle should arrive at four. So make sure if you're playing against Stargate, then you should have your uh, spores started at 3:30. And let's also go a little farther. So let's get our nexus. So you can see the nexus starts at uh, four minutes. If I only make an oracle and a void ray, or like only two oracles. So if they play something like this. With a very fast third you know they're playing very economic and you don't actually have to worry about um any attacks really like there's not too much that protoss can do in this position because they can make they can warp in adepts but they're um they're glaiveless adepts so they're very weak and you know the stargate units aren't really that scary you should make a couple extra queens and so it's uh it's totally fine that you can just drone super hard on one gas all the way up to like 66 and you'll be fine in this case Okay, if I go back just a sec though, there's nothing more to see from here, I don't think. If I go here and I switch it up, so this game I went Oracle. Let me take a man here. Remember, your Overlord should be behind their base right now. It should be over here. So if Protoss does this, they still make a Void Ray, but they take double gas then at like 3.30, then you know they're doing some sort of heavy tech play. There's a bunch of options here, but the the main option I would say right now is double Stargate. So let's do that. Let's go for a second Stargate. You could maybe sneak in right now, but that's pretty uh, risky. Not very likely to actually see anything. Protoss has the Void Ray, so more likely um, they're going to deny your scout and you're not actually going to see that they're going double stargate. But you will see that they have double gas. And so as soon as you see they have double gas, you know that they're doing uh, some sort of tech play. Could be double stargate, could be uh, some other stuff we'll look at in a second. But you can see that the third base here is uh, more delayed. So Protoss is now taking a, a base at like 430, right? So much more likely they're going for a tech play here. So again, that could be double stargate, it could be something else, but you can kind of have similar uh, responses. <clears throat> so, you know, it, it, the other I'll show the other build in a second, but it could be um, like a Glaives build, basically. Could be double stargate Void Ray, could be double stargate Phoenix, um, could be Glaives. So you'll definitely need a Roach Warren, um, but you don't necessarily need to get uh, a layer, I don't think. And they don't really have a lot of Void Rays super fast. I'll give you a time when they can have something actually scary. Here we only have uh, one Void Ray currently. They're probably going to try and clear your Overlords. I think if you're playing against the Stargate, you should go for the, the Overlord speed right away. That's probably done by now. So honestly, you should only lose like one, maybe two Overlords. Okay, so we have two Void Rays at five. And we'll probably have about four by 5.30, maybe 5.45, something like that. So that's really like when the number gets kind of scary. You can already have your fourth base about this time and pretty good creep spread and like five queens. So as long as you play towards queens and not like Hydra, then you should have plenty of queens by this point. I think that's the best way to play it out is just make a bunch of queens. Okay, so let's say 4 by 545, but let's see when they get to your base. Not even at 6. A little bit after 6. 
So four void rays by six is like the scariest. So you can easily have a bunch of queens by then and be fully droned. And um, yeah, it's it's not that bad. Probably the hardest part about playing this type of style is leaving some links around the map. I do have a uh, a, uh, a replay. I was teaching a another GM Zerg, not Blackwing, another one, how to deal with uh, Sky Toss. So I have those replays. We'll probably look at those uh, in a couple days from now. We're going to be doing a bunch of ZVP videos. Okay, so this is the Void Ray style. Let's go to... Let's go back here. So let's say instead of this Stargate, I do the other fast tech play. So we'll still go uh, Oracle Void Ray. You could just go Void Ray, I guess. Let's do that, actually that. Usually with the Adept play, you don't go Oracle. So let's go from here. So we'll finish our Stargate, we'll chrono out a Void Ray when we can. We'll get a Pylon, we'll get our Gate, and then we'll grab a another tech. Actually, maybe we can sneak it in here even. So they get the Void Ray, they're going to deny your Overlords. You're not going to be able to see in here again. But you are going to see them not get their third on time. Unless they only make one Void Ray. <laughs> if they make Oracle Void Ray though, and a tech, then you shouldn't see this third on time. So this is kind of, uh, I think this is Showtime's build. So this is Showtime's build. It's pretty clever because it looks the same as the uh, the the first build, the the macro build, which is why he's been able to catch a bunch of Zergs off guard. If you've been watching Dreamhack, it's at a uh, he can get his third by 405. But if you make the Oracle and the Void Ray, then you can't do this at the right time. So if you go from here. I could sneak in the Oracle. It's after the like it should be before the Twilight, but I'll just do it now. It's gonna work out the same. Get one more pylon. I also skipped an adept. I should have made an adept. So this should delay it till about um 4:30. Make sure we don't skip probes. And well, 420. So basically, the the idea is that you want to be able to make sure that Protoss is uh, getting their their nexus at like four. And if they're not, then you should be suspicious of them adding a little more tech. And if you're really high level, you can kind of keep track of how many air units they make. Like if you if you see a void ray kill your overlord, but then um, you know an oracle never shows up or you don't see a second void, then you can maybe start to be suspicious of something like uh, Glaived Adepts. Especially if you don't see any gases. Right? So there's like a combination of stuff here. You want to keep track of the gases, you want to keep track of the third Nexus timing, and you want to keep track of their tech in the early game. Okay, what other builds can we look at? So these are the Stargate builds. There's another couple ones, but I think these are the main ones right now. Actually, what I've been seeing pretty common uh, with students is uh, some soul trains. So let's look at that, because that's a little bit different than the uh, the first build we showed. So let's go let's go stalker again. Trying to boost that. They're gonna get a very fast uh, a robo. Probably hide their immortals. So again, you won't really be able to get in here, but you're going to see some clues. So first clue is they are probably going to be making sentries. If they want to be doing this whole train, then it makes a lot of sense to get sentries early so you have energy. And if they don't do this, then it may be a little harder to scout it, but you're going to have a lot of additional info 
that their uh, or sorry, their push is going to be much weaker if they if they don't make these. Okay, so sentries. They're going to Chronobus an Immortal. Now you should see this Robotech. So if you're playing um, this game, you should be sacking your Overlord pretty early and getting this info. Or you should be uh, sending your second Overlord in the main. And um, you might think that they can just do this, but they can't really do this because um, if they switch their Stalker into the main, you can use your Lings to, uh, to really annoy the Sentry. Um, and so he'll have to burn like a force field and he'll have to, you know, maybe make a full wall or something. So you can kind of harass him quite a bit and, uh, and get in here. And if you do the scout early enough, then you're going to get the robo scout anyways without, um, you know, for sure guaranteed. Okay. So basically they can't do that. So let's chrono, uh, immortals. made a small mistake should be good here yeah I should have made a pylon about now this build super tight and then we can get a second sentry I got this sentry a little too fast okay so I'll keep playing this build so we can see when it hits and, um, and some more clues because really, you're only going to see the rubble right now. So they could be doing quite a few things with that. Although, even just seeing the robo, I think, is pretty suspicious. There's not a, a lot of macro builds you can do from that. Let's get a pylon. Maybe two pylons, actually. Okay, so one clue is that they're you know, not going to get a very fast gas with this build. Because um, you actually need quite a lot of minerals to make these immortals. So four minute gas is not super quick. You see sentries at the front. They can't really hide those. You're going to see them at least pop out. Even if they bring them back here, you're going to see them uh, produce. Let's chrono out one more immortal. And the more sentries they add, the more likely they're uh, committing to this push. You also notice it's 430 and I still don't have a third base. So generally what I tell students is you should try to get to about 52 workers and then you should be just stopping full stop and make sure that Protoss is going to grab their third and if they don't then you don't really need to um, be making any more drones than that six seven seven should be good get the war prism so probably about five or five thirty they'll be moving out so you should be fully droned right now. You should have already hit your um, your 52 drone mark. And you should see this move out and start making some units. If they don't move out at this point though, they're probably still just building uh, units in their main. Maybe they don't have this build as tight as I do. I may have done this build a few times in Heart of the Swarm. <laughs> or a lot, maybe a lot. Okay, so... They'll do one more warp in and then they'll hit you. Um, one way you can deal with this that I think is a little bit gimmicky but works super well is you don't get a layer <clears throat> and you have a ton of lings right now. Like you make a ton of lings first and you just surround all their sentries. Um, <laughs> and that's pretty hard to deal with from, from Protoss unless they're hallucinating. Um, but probably the more solid way is to get some Ravagers out so you're ready when they come in and then uh, just knock down the, the force fields consistently. You should be playing kind of a mix of Ravager Ling Roach. Yeah, this, this strat's not as good as it once was because of the, the Ravager pile. So you really have to make sure you get a lot of Ravagers. Um, but try to balance it out as well so you can spend your money. Okay, so yeah, so that's that build. So the main clues are you see a Robo first, you see some sentries building, um, and then I guess you can also see the late gases. Let's see, what other builds are there? There's a Dark Templar drop. You could probably watch my video though if you want to see the that um, build order. But you should see uh, a Twilight Council and a Robo. Let's do let's do the Glaives build. That's actually pretty common. Um, 
So we should be good here. We'll just need to get a Twilight instead of the Robo. Yeah, this will probably be the last build we do. Unless there's some other common builds. You guys can let me know in the chat. Uh, or <laughs> the chat, the comments. Let's go to that. Get our Twilight. So this build with Protoss, they pull off gas a little bit. And they're only going to get a third gas. So that'll be a huge clue. So they go Twilight, then they go Robo. And then they pull off gas here. So if you were sacrificing Overlord, you could pick up on this, but um, you're probably not going to see that, to be honest. You're not going to really have an Overlord in at this time. Uh, I'm missing Adept. They also make an Adept here. <clears throat> gate, then they start making uh, glaives and chrono boosting that, and then they cut at uh, 12 probes. So you might notice the cut if your overlord's over here. Um, actually this map's kind of hard, but if you if you are on a map where you have vision of that, you can see the probe cut. So that's something you could pick up on. And then once they make the War Prism, then they continue probing. So it's actually a pretty hard probe cut. You, sh you can definitely see this if you're paying attention around 3.33.45. And then they get one more gas. You can skip the gas, I guess, if you want to do the, uh, the DT less version. So, <clears throat> you might pick up on this if you have your Overlord there. Um, and if they don't have the gas in your, I mean, you, it might even look like they're doing uh, like the the charge it all in or the glaive all in. So you're kind of responding the same way. You're um, you're not getting your layer. You're stopping around 41 workers, and then you're making a lot of Roachling and. It's usually a good idea to get some spore crawlers as well, just in case they go DT like I'm doing here. I think SOS did a build where he skipped this but still went DT. <laughs> he likes to play around the uh, the clues, but you should still be able to pick up on these. Uh... I didn't do this build very well, but this is these are some clues you should pick up on. So yeah, they should hit at about 4:30. Um, I was supposed to make two more adepts first, so this should be. Uh... I think it's 8 adept. It should be 8 adept by, by 4.30 at the fastest, and then it should be uh, 12 adept by 4.50. So we're, we're a couple shy. But yeah, it should be like that. And uh, and so you need to be ready at least by, by 4.50, I would say. And if you're GM, then you need to be having at least a couple units here to buy time at 4.30. Maybe your queens can help as well. All right. Cool. I think that's all of them, to be honest. Um, but if you guys do have some more builds you want me to uh, to show, and maybe show the clues to scouting them, then uh, let me know in the comments. And if you found this video helpful, make sure to like it. I'm gonna do a uh, more advanced ZVP opening right now, and I'll upload that tomorrow probably. All right. Thanks for watching, guys. I will see you in the next one.